most of us live in the mad circles, mad space. A space that is filled with madness. If you remember the last time I released my last episode on news trending in our mad space, you will realize that I talked about a news that has to do with a man who boldly came out to make a statement about what he did to a 14 years old student. I chopped a 14 years old class student until she completed SHS teacher turned radio presenter shockingly admits. In recent news, I get to know that it wasn't just something he revealed just because he wanted to probably review what he did that was wrong. He revealed it because the same thing, Kama is playing his part on in his life. Check this headline. This is like an update of what happened and why he released the news he released. He said, I slept with a 14 years old years ago. Now someone is doing the same to my daughter. Pedophile confesses on live radio. But the beautiful aspect of it is this. After he released that uh, information on the radio show, uh, we get to hear what happened afterward. Let me read the headline to you, what happened to him after he released the video. At first, he revealed, the headline says that he was sleeping with a girl. The same thing is being melted on his girl now. So it's like Kama playing his own part uh, in his life. So. Is he only reveal he only revealed that incident which happened to the girl who was like a victim in his hand because the same thing is being melted on his girl. But another headline now comes out and tells us how the Ghanaian police arrested him immediately. He did that live show. They have arrested him. So perhaps in Ghana or some part of Africa, justice is still being served. It's not like the Mm, the place called, mm, you know, I don't need to probably mention it. Nothing works in Nigeria. Ah, I'll mention it eventually. Sorry. So the only thing we try to probably sue ourselves for is headlines like this. Check this headline. Uh, court gives judgment on suit challenging Arabic inscriptions on Naira notes. The Federal High Court in Ekoi, Lagos, had dismissed a case challenging the inclusion of Arabic inscription on it. The question now is. Whether a Naira note has an Arabic inscription or whatever, does that determine the value of the currency? We are here, we are in a state of disprudency, and the, the only thing some people can bring out is what was written, how it was designed. It doesn't matter. It's just like a representation of something. 200 Naira note is supposed to be a representation of our currency and it's supposed to carry values the value keep depreciating on a daily basis and some people are here talking about what was inscribed on the note or not madness so check out this other headline and this is these are things that only happen only in this country called nigeria policemen ordered each of the Passengers to transfer as much as 350,000 naira to a POS account. Victim disclosed. Kinsley Ebuka, one of the victims who carried, who cried out over alleged incessant harassment and extortion from security operative mountain roadblocks on the Onisha Weary Road, said the policeman order each of the passengers to transfer as much as 350,000 naira to a POS account or be arrested and handed over to the anti-robbery squad. People are not even safe in their own country. These are the things that are being perpetrated by this so-called law enforcement. And that was what led to the previous answers. I don't believe in protest. But I will not tell you here what I believe in. But there is a better way we can solve all these problems. It's just that people are not ready to learn. Perhaps I'm going to do a video on what Nigerians can do in order to restore their dignity and to take back what belongs to them. But that's going to be a whole separate video. I'm going to be touching every nooks and crannies of why Nigerians are being treated the way they are being treated in their own country. So, but let's move on to another headline, one of which are uh, one of the madness with that, you know, we celebrate in our space. So most of the time, a lot of you think that Jesus is Lord. The Muslim people, uh, Muslim brothers believe that Allah 
is the greatest, the only one, the one who created heaven and earth. You know, so many concepts that was designed in order to probably control people's mode of thinking, the people's narratives and stuff like that. But well, I'm not gonna. I'm done. I've done a lot of religious uh, video in the past, though I've not really touched the core part of religion. But I will always tell you one truth that I believe to tomorrow: that religion is an institution that was invented to control human endeavors, to control the way they think, the way they perceive things, the way they do things, in order to make some people money, give some people power. To give some people control so that they can, you will now become like a puppet. Then you will become a puppet in the hands of the puppeteer, the ones who invented this religion and the ones who are helping them to propagate it are like the puppeteers. So all the people who are now believing in it are the puppets. But let's not go to them. Um, I stumbled upon this and then I felt like I need to share it. This is one of the stupidity that. Uh, uh, People chastise these days, but it's a very good one. Next, uh, netizens react as Nigerian man chooses 10 million naira over Pastor Adeboye's prayer. If I were the one, I would even choose 100 naira over this man's prayer. That's the truth. I won't say more than that. Any man at this age and time that is not speaking the truth, that claim to be worshipping one true God, and is not speaking the truth, is not worth being called. The, the most, I said it in my last video. Most people are hypocrites. You see, what does it mean to be hypocrite? Hypocrite is asking people to do something you are not going to do. Example, I'm a pastor. I say, brethren, you have to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You have to believe in your personal Savior. You have to put all your strength in Him. You have to believe in whatever He tells you. You have to read the Word of God. The Word of God is your shield, is your security, is your strength, is your this. As a pastor preaching now that when I get sick, when I fall sick, I rush to the hospital. I need to protect myself. I employ the security agencies to probably do that. Carrying guns around. I ask people to turn Christ to their shield. And police who are very harmed to their teeth are the ones that are securing my own life. Yet, I'm telling people to do otherwise. See, that's the hypocrisy there. I ask people to believe in God. But me, I believe in money. I believe in what I can what can use money to achieve on earth here. Someone is hungry. You are telling that person to believe in God. Uh, let's not go deep. So this is just the airline. Well, I, I think I believe I know a lot of people will come under this uh, headline, especially when you see blogs like this carry this type of story. They will bash the guy. Some people will come and say, Yeah, it's true. Some people will say, No, it's not true. Our pastor is is God's. And general, they used to drink tea together. Let's not go there today. So that's just that. So another one is this. This is very beautiful one. I want you to pay attention to it. Drama as Nigerian pastor hold church members to pay tithes of 700 k out of 1 million naira in their accounts. It means that if I attend this same church, I will have 1 million naira in my account. Then one pastor will ask me to give God 70% of the money. Hmm. That was good. You see, until you people have sense in this world, you will keep living in madness. They will keep, they will turn you to a mad person, and yet you will think you are sane. But well, that's your own. A Nigerian pastor passionately spoke about the importance of generous giving in the church. A statement have brought to light to, it brought to light a debate on how much one should give as tithes and offerings, and the role of money in religious devotion. Just the play. Just the play. So, I stumbled upon this one too. In life, I used to believe in professionalism. Uh, the type of education handed over to us, I believe is archaic. It's not serving any purpose. It's just like breeding uh, two slaves or breeding uh, people who just know how to use English language to communicate in a very fluent way, uh, like uh, building uh, corporate laborers. That's what I used to target, corporate laborers. Uh, we have the laborers like uh, such as uh, the bricklayer, 
the this, the that, the roof, uh, the weather, the mechanic and stuff like that. But majorly, all those people who work in the banking sector, banking sector, insurance sector, oil and gas, telecoms, and all sort of other corporate, or the one that they call the white collar job sector, they are oftentimes believing that they are better than the ones who operate in the blue collar job sector. The blue collar job sector is mostly people who are professionals who have and they work. And the white collar sector are the ones who oftentimes believe that they are training school on how to read and write, how to speak, how to communicate fluently, and perhaps happens to be working in an office where they pay them monthly wages at the end of the month. And uh, I believe in that, and I believe that uh, the best set of people are the people who solve uh, problems. Not just because you are well-educated, it's just because you are being able to solve problems. So if you are not able to solve problems, it becomes something else. It becomes something else. So, but this very pastor has always run his mouth. I don't know. Well, that's just him. A lot of his followers. You see, one thing about these pastors, they say teachers Christ, they want to become like Jesus, like Christ representative. And according to the Bible, that even people like me read, even if I don't believe in religion, but I read it. In order to understand the concept of where they are coming from and what they preach, because if you don't read their books, you won't know where to attack them. You won't know if they are lying or not. The so-called person that they claim to be following might not be outrightly a gentle person, but one thing he has, according to what they wrote, whether his character is fiction or whether it truly exists, I don't know, but he is humble. He is humble. These ones are not humble. They are proud in nature. Yeah, let's not go there. So when we follow God, those in medical school said we were wasting our life. In a sermon titled Dimension of Praise and Worship at the Power Communion Midweek Service, Dr. Paul, uh, Dr. Pastor Paul, and you see the name, Dr. Pastor. This one called himself a doctor, yet he's not operating on anybody. He's not prescribing anything to anybody. What he's teaching them is to believe in one God that even him has not seen before. He gather all sort of dimbats into his congregation. And what do they do? Person that is supposed to be serving a good purpose in life, treating people, healing them physically. He, and most of the people who are sick in this church, they often can go to the hospital. They will not be backing it up with faith. Do people really know what they want, really? And these are the people they follow. Dr. Pastor Paul Eninji, founder and senior pastor of Dunamis International Gospel, shared deeply personal revelation. What was it deeply? In the sermon video from one hour, 20 minutes, he recounted the skepticism and criticism he faced during his medical school years for choosing to follow his divine calling over a conventional medical career. This person who said divine calling will always go to an hospital. He will go to any hospital, to a hospital whenever he falls sick. He will not use that divine calling to heal himself. He went there to wait. The lecturer will criticize him. If you can read through all this, you can pause this video and read this. The lecturer will criticize him was right. You came when you know you wanted to go and do pastor. Why can't you go? Because that was what the pastor uh, the person said that if you read the, the top paragraph here, say he recalled a particular enriched lecturer who criticized him saying if you want to carry the Bible, now you are talking of preaching. Why don't you go and do it after secondary school? Why waste time, really? Why should you, after they have trained you to become a medical doctor, then you say you want to become a pastor? Is that not a waste of time? It is actually a waste of time. If not for the fact that in our space here, we celebrate madness as the norm, you will not go and spend time wasting people teaching you what you're not going to be using. So you are now calling yourself a doctor. Why add doctor to that title? Why not just... Call yourself pastor, but you need to show off to us that you went to school, that you are well educated, you are grinded. It's not as if I don't have a, a, a degree, it's not as if it's just that God called me. But we are we all know that you won't be able to even afford to buy the land that you are using for your church, your church, if not for the fact that you become a pastor. So it's easier to make money by claiming that you are God's vessel or by claiming that you are the soldier or general. Of some entity or deity that we have never seen before. Well, 
good for the people who are your customers on a daily, weekly, or Sunday basis. That's on them. Uh, this one says something here which is very funny. He said, Those of you that your pastor prophesied that you will sing a new song this year, go and learn the new national anthem. Bishop Puka tell Christian, tells Christians, which is true. This bishop is the one of the Roman Catholic diocese of Shokoto, Matthew Puka. He stated that the Nigerian Congress, Gant, whose pastor have prophesied that they will sing a new song, should go and learn the new national anthem. It makes sense. The new national anthem should have been. How did we get here that we have all these people as leaders anyway? You know, and I think he's trying to mock other pastors who claim to be prophet, uh, prophets, who prophesy into people's lives, who see vision that they never even see. People who cannot see be they are behind that is now coming to have seen it. And even him, I've watched most of his interview before. Some it makes sense, but mostly they don't. That's just the truth. They have never provided any solution. And even if they try to be providing solution alike, the moment they leave, the, they will just go and collect their own share and then they will begin to start talk gibberish. So let's move to another headline. Anyway, some people are now blaming the Redeemed Christian Church for what happens to one of their favorite pastors who was pastoring the city of David or whatever they call that parish that is in. Maybe VI or Eko, you or Lucky or whatever they call that place. They said, use and dumb system. RCCG member attacks redeem, redeem church over Pastor Illumoya, a little of this resignation. So a lot of people are hanging around and getting angry over the use and dumb system RCCG use. Uh, after Iluyo Madis uh, resigned from the church. The redeemed Christian Church of God, RCCG, has been accused of rewarding its good and diligent member with frustration and punishment. A member of the church, Funshaw Lufemi, said RCCG uses the system of use and dumb to chase away those who help the church grow. Olufemi said, suspending Pastor Idowu Iluyo Madi and his wife over a birthday party over the death of late access holding CEO. About Uwe was a lame reason. Madness in our space. When madness, when you celebrate madness, madness in our way or mock one will start backing other madness and they will start lapping each other in layers. If not, is in the civilized world, is anybody supposed to even be going to one church in the first place when church hasn't done anything for anybody medically? spiritually in fact the destruction of church causes there's this story i'm going to be telling you i'm going to be, i will do a video on how many deaths religion has caused and uh, anybody who has brain who have the ability to research will discover that religion has killed more people on earth done more damages than good but let's not go there we are just discussing the headlines and its madness you know this one says something. This very one. Whenever I look at this one, even his face, the way it looks like. Like a pathetic. Anyway, no direct attack on anybody's personality. Stop saying the prices of food in Nigeria had gone up. Pastor David the B. You may urge this public. He said that in a recent video on Facebook, Pastor David admonished his congregation to cease discussing their fears and societal troubles, advocating instead for a faith-based perspective rooted in the Bible. You see, when Dangote should do something and he becomes successful, even people who are far brilliant than him, if they do the same thing and they are not successful, uh, people will, uh, the likes of Dangote will call them lazy. Or they don't understand the concept, the the parameters or the metrics they are supposed to use to deal with this business. It is easier to say that uh, a poor person smell. Uh, when you have money to clean up, live in a very good environment, buy new clothes, use good soap and 
live in a very conducive environment, well kept, have all the gadgets you need, have money to buy good perfume, good sprays, look clean and well kept. This one, after he has collected all the tithes and offering from his member, being rich to them, you will have the effrontery to tell the people that they are not supposed to do this, do that. It's easier to say that. But would you blame him? He collects money from them, he's living large, he has money that they can spend for the next 100 years and yet he won't still be poor. He will easily have told the people that their faith is not well rooted. If everybody is a pastor and they all have the same numbers of congregation, it's not possible anyway. Because some people have to be the idiots. Why someone have to be the one hitting the fruit of the idiots? I won't say more than that. Let me do a few more headlines before I check out from this episode. Controversy, you are correct. I am a madman. Abel, Pastor Abel Damina respond to Adeboye. And if you look at this headline, uh, I think Adeboye is calling him a madman. He's admitting that he's a madman if he's the one telling the truth. So this one now complements the previous headline. Rise and fight now, or Damina will destroy our source of living. Bishop tells Adebayo Oyedepo. I think they meant to write Adeboye Oyedepo orders. This one, a rabble wisdom who precise over answers assembly church worry data state. If you look at the names, has called on mafian pastors in the Christian dome to rise and fight Pastor Abel Damina for preaching against transactional gospel. So he clearly admits to, you see, this headline, some people will see it and still go to this man church on Sunday. He clearly admits that it is a business center. Everything we are doing in the Christendom is transactional. And the Islam people are caught in these days. And don't ask me why, just look within your environment. And ask yourself if you've been living, uh, if you are like uh, in your late 30s or early 40s or mid 40s or 50s or above. And if you live, you've been living in this country for quite some years. Ask yourself this question. Is the same way Islam people used to practice their religion? Is it the same way they still practice it now? Or they are already copying Christianity, creating different sects in their Islam to Awarodin, Asarodin, as far as their belief, and also creating different church, organizing shows and programs and events like the Christian people, doing um, breakthrough services, uh, night VGs, Sunday church programs and stuff. Anyway, so they, this one admits that whatever they are doing is transactional. So a, a pastor among them who is tired of the old chariot is coming out now to nail them and is asking the generals who are the mafian pastors, the Adeboyes, the Oedipos, to stand up, rise against this man who is trying to take food away from our is trying to collect the praise, free the praise, set them free away from the trap we've set for them that generates, avenue that generates constant flow of cash just because the Lord is with us. So I think that's what Adeboye is also abusing this one for, perhaps because he's been attacking all their silly doctrines that. It's fake. It's not biblical in the first place. Even the ones that are biblical too is actually, actually fake. And in their own world, when the foundation is is destroyed, what shall the righteous do? So whenever when this the foundation which they set all these things are already faulty, there is nothing anybody can do. Those are the mad things that we celebrate in our space. Let me give you this one more headline before I round up this particular episode. You become you become big man after appointment as pastor. EFCC chairman Olukoye Day tells religious leader. I think this one was is a new yeah, EFCC chairman. According to the story from the few paragraphs that I read, he's urging them to use their influence as a pastor to set the record straight that they are they are already they are already big men the moment they are appointed as a pastor. That pastor wield so many influence and power. So they will be able to direct and correct the social disparities, the social decadency in our community and set the record straight. But that is his view. When you live in a mad society, 
you see people like this urging the people who should not even exist in the first place or who should not even be part of the people who set the metrics of what is right and wrong or people who are called a baya like she used to call them you know set asking them to set the norms people who can never set the norms but the moment the norms is set or the norms are set it definitely means that people will stop eating most people who became rich today in this country became rich by just embezzling money taking advantage of others it's not as if they have anything they are putting on the table they are bringing to the fold they are just it's like a systemic way of ripping people off and the beautiful aspect of it is just that when you are poor you are always desperate you're always looking for a way out so the best way is to probably walk into the den of lion what promise you meat and you will not know that you are the same meat the lion is dead that was why he offered you the meat the the the, the so-called pastor the freedom the financial freedom or whatever the so-called pastor promised people is it's like the bait to bring them in so that they can become food to those pastors. And that is what is happening in our midst, in our society these days. They are like the prey. So the pastors are like the lion who promised the other animals food. So the promise is the bait. When the other animal comes to the lions, then what do they become? They become food for the lion. And that is what is happening in our society, in our community, in our, in the almost, almost entire world. It's just that it's more rampant than each other from country to country depending on the leaders who is who are running the country and who set the policies until i come your way next time if you enjoyed this show please share it with your friend uh help me subscribe uh, subscribe to this channel so that whenever i post beautiful contents like this you'll be the first person to be alert and then if you have any topic or you have uh an opinion i know people always have opinions especially in a beautiful world like this mm. uh, it's good that way even idiots also have opinion but if you have opinion you know that you have what it takes to give a beautiful suggestion how things could have been done better or you have a particular topic you want me to talk about just let me know at the comment section until i come your way next time stay cool and if you don't have brain please borrow some or you look for money to buy some please don't be as gullible as you have already in this 21st century. A lot of people's money that could have been used for investment have been put into the hand of somebody who is using it for private jail and their own children are living large while your own are going to be living in abject poverty just because you are so stupid enough to create it for them that way. So please borrow yourself some brain and stop being puppet. I'm still going to come with another episode some other time to talk about the pastors, our politicians, our celebrities, the way every one of you follow all these people that gave them the power. I'm going to be breaking it down. And if you have sense, you buy into my idea. I'm just a simple person. And I'm the same person like every other person. The only thing that set us different, that set, that create disparity or set, that make us seem different in this world are privileges. It's not as if one person is greater than another person. We are all human beings with equal equal rights but our purposes our potential and uh where we uh, where they give birth to us and the set of people who give birth to us and the way they plan for our future is what makes us seem different especially our potential and that disparity doesn't necessarily make one person better than the other so if you have brain at all you stop following anyone even me, I don't wish to have followers. I just want to have people who listen to me and then learn one or two things from whatever I'm saying. It's not as if I want a group of people to be following me around like they are God. I'm just a normal human person. The main reason why I can do this is because I can sit down and think and I'm not biased in my thinking. Not because I love or hate somebody. It's just because of what I have experienced and what works and what doesn't work. It's as simple as that. Till I come your way next time, Keep subscribing, keep sharing my video if you like it. And if you don't like it, your opinion and opinions are welcome. Take care.